What do World War II and this rubber ducky have in common? Stick around and find out. Americans didn't want to get involved with the war in Europe that had started in 1939. However, we were forced into fighting in the war because of Japan's bombing of an American naval base at Pearl Harbor, Hawaii. After the attack at Pearl Harbor, Americans began to get ready or mobilize for war. This not only meant soldiers trained for war, but also Americans at home began to get ready to manufacture weapons and military vehicles like tanks, airplanes, and jeeps. Other new tech included the radar. Unfortunately, Japan had a head start on America. Japan does not have many natural resources, so they had been taking over countries and land in Asia for a few years. There was no stopping them. Japan was practicing imperialism. Imperialism is when a country forcefully or politically influences another country. They had already taken over areas where natural rubber production occurred, such as the Philippines. Natural rubber was used for many things in daily life, from pencil erasers to car tires. The construction of a military airplane used one half ton of rubber, a tank needed about one ton, and a battleship, 75 tons. That's about 11 elephants worth of rubber. People were encouraged to recycle the rubber, but it wasn't enough. To solve the problem, a team of the best American chemists from several companies worked together starting in December 1941. They worked very hard for 16 months without an answer to this important problem. They struggled to find the perfect formula to make a passable synthetic or man-made rubber that was as good as the natural rubber found in Japanese-controlled countries. Finally, right after Christmas in 1942, the scientists had a breakthrough and perfected the recipe for synthetic rubber. The new formula needed petroleum, raw oil, to make it. Thankfully, America had a fantastic source for the black gold, Texas. Many plants or factories were set up in Texas, some near the famous Spindletop oil site, to produce the fake rubber along with other needed war items. There were also many plants that made airplanes and tanks. Many of the World War II airplanes were made right here in the Dallas area. America was able to manufacture tanks, jeeps, and airplanes, which all have rubber parts to help take back France and other territory from Germany. Thanks to the help of this new technology, synthetic rubber, Americans helped storm the beaches of Normandy, France on D-Day, June 6, 1944. Germany was finally defeated in May of 1945. Later that same summer, August 6 and 9, 1945, American airplanes flew over two Japanese cities, Hiroshima and Nagasaki. In the bombers, American pilots carried the first ever nuclear weapons. The synthetic rubber and some of the giant aircraft's components, such as wheels and hoses, allowed the bomber to safely take off, fly, and come back safely. Without Texas oil and manufacturing, America might not have had the technology to help win World War II. And that's how fake rubber made in Texas helped America and our allies or friends win World War II. Bye.